Hey, what's going on people? Welcome back. Today I will be reacting to another video by Destiny and this one is a special request. It is titled Red Pill Debater Challenges Destiny Embarrasses Himself in Private's Mod. So I am somewhat familiar with Destiny. From what I know, he is a YouTube political commentator slash debater, and he tends to engage with people who have very extreme viewpoints on certain issues. And how do I know that? I know that because I've reacted to his debate with Nick Fuentes and the panel he did on Fresh and Fit. From what I've seen, Destiny strikes me as someone who's super bright and is willing to engage in uncomfortable conversations. I will say I'm not familiar with the gentleman and he's getting ready to debate and this video is very long so bear with me chances are i'm not going to react to the whole thing i will try to sit through it as long as i possibly can let's get started expose destiny the racist gamer and the lie of homophobia destiny exposed himself as a racist and a hater of african-american culture is that right? Destiny exposed himself as a racist and a hater of African American culture will be dissecting the hateful psychology of this fellow. Important, he is invited to join my stream and debate. Well, I'm hoping Destiny is not what this gentleman is labeling him as, but I'm not super duper familiar with his content. Although I have seen him arguing against scientific racism, which is a good sign to me that he might not actually be a racist. But again, I haven't consumed a lot of Destiny's content or reacted to it. So I will reserve judgment until I hear this man's argument. We'll be dissecting the hateful psychology of this fellow. Important, he is invited to join my stream and debate live. Oh, <laughs> I'm invited live in five hours. Oh, well, I'm not doing anything tonight. You know what I've what I've noticed is that Destiny's videos aren't exactly reaction friendly. Okay, so this timestamp is titled Saint and Sinner Challenges Destiny. So let's see what but he has to say here. Okay. Men don't take it up the backside, bruh. Women don't e aren't even supposed to be taking it up the backside the way you doing it, bruh. A, he sounds extremely homophobic. And B, is he referring to Destiny? Oh God, the projection. Oof, this is going to be brutal. And just side note, if you if you didn't think the LGBTQ mafia hates black people and black culture, they act mafia. Not only is he ascribing malicious intent to an entire community of people that is too diverse to generalize with any specific motive, but he also seems to be contriving this conspiracy that the LGBTQ community is hell bent on destroying black people. And this is an argument that makes me really sad because black people and LGBTQ people do not exist as mutually exclusive entities. There are gay people in the white community. There are gay people in the Hispanic community. There are gay people in the Asian community. And there are gay people in the black community. So if we try our best to follow the logic that he's using, it essentially falls apart. Because if the LGBT community is trying to destroy the black community, then how does that account for the LGBT people who exist within the black community? Are they trying to destroy themselves? Which part of themselves are they trying to destroy? The purpose is to convince you that there's a conspiracy going on, that gay people have this agenda that they're trying to impose on straight people to make us more feminine and to emasculate us. And you understand why black people might be a little more sensitive to the imposition of sexuality given the legacy of colonialism and the legacy of slavery and how they were essentially emasculated and not treated or respected as full grown men. But that is not an excuse to carry on homophobic sentiment that is rooted in white supremacist ideology, which is what this man is doing right now. I don't know if he's aware of that contradiction, um, but I guess we'll see. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Because remember, hip hop culture is uh, one very much so an expression of the African American culture. African Americans have had the highest levels of religiosity in America. Well, I think hip hop culture, in part, he's right. He's in part, he's right. But broadly speaking, hip hop culture is also the expression of blackness as a global entity. As we know, the founders of hip hop in the 1980s, located in the Bronx, had strong ties to Afro-Caribbean culture, right? Because the creators of hip hop 
were Jamaican and Puerto Rican. So I think it's important when we have conversations about hip hop to bring in different voices across the black diaspora because hip hop is representative of so much more than a particular racial demographic located in a particular geographic location. So on top of being an expression of the black diaspora, hip hop to me also represents the expression of struggle. It represents the voice of those who have historically not had a voice. But I don't think he and I necessarily disagree. I just wanted to add more complexity to what he's saying. And along with that has come the rebuke of that lifestyle. And so very much so the LGBTQ has tried to, you know, break the African-American male the African-American male cult. I think I might have missed something, but I don't know where he's... And along with that has come the rebuke of that lifestyle. And so very much so the LGBTQ has tried to... Of what lifestyle? I guess I'm I'm missing where... I'm, I'm really struggling to see the connections between hip-hop as an expression of the African-American community and how the LGBT community is trying to destroy the African-American community through hip-hop. Hopefully he'll elaborate, but I don't see where he's going with this. You know, break the African-American male, the African-American male culture, which is largely embedded in hip-hop music. Jesus. It'll be good because she's in, you're in graduate school right now? Uh, yes. Okay, so she's in graduate school, so she is, by all accounts, an academic and theoretically should be a rap. That's not, I mean, if you're in graduate school, so if you're doing your master's or PhD, you might be able to classify yourself as a junior scholar or a junior academic, but to say that someone doing their master's is an academic is kind of a misnomer. And on top of that, anyone could really be an academic, right? If you enjoy reading, doing research, and engaging in nuanced conversations surrounding different disciplines that fall beneath the academic umbrella, um, you can classify yourself as an academic as well. It's not necessarily exclusive to a certain group. You know, Gramsci has this. Gramsci, by the way, is a famous uh, theorist. Um, he has this concept called the organic intellectual. Someone who might not have been formally educated in a college setting, but nonetheless is naturally curious, appreciates the quest for knowledge, and enjoys engaging in intellectual conversations about complex matters. And although college can help you develop those skills, by no means is it a prerequisite for intellect, right? Some of the smartest people I've met have been in prisons and in jails. Um, people who didn't even receive a high school education. Uber drivers, based on my anecdotal experience, have been some of the most philosophically adept and socially interesting individuals I've ever come across. Perhaps even more so compared to the professors and peers and researchers I've encountered in a lecture hall or in a seminar or in a workshop. So I know I'm being nitpicky here, but I think um, these are really important things to point out. Okay, so she's in graduate school, so she is, by all accounts, an academic and theoretically should be a rational person able to... <laughs> That's not what that means. Being in graduate school doesn't grant you credence as a rational human being. I'm not sure how I feel about these weird correlations. Analyze information and think in a linear way. No, you're being trained to do those things. You're being trained to be rational. You're being trained to assess information analytically. You're being trained to develop a critical eye for discerning data. But most people don't go into graduate school with those skills. They go there to develop those skills. Hey there, Destiny. How are you? Hey, pretty good. Were you talking about my school? Is that what was going on in here? We're just warming up. We wanted to get some background on you because there's a funny thing going on on the internet. Your yes. fanatics, they, they deluded themselves into thinking that you're brighter than you are. Okay, so this conversation is already starting off very hostile. He's referring to Destiny's fans as fanatics, which carries a negative connotation that assumes rabid and blind support. And that might be true. Destiny might have fans who support him blindly and dilute him into thinking he's smarter than he actually is. But I'm not sure if that's how you want to start off a 
good faith discussion about topics as serious as racism and homophobia. I would not recommend starting a conversation with anyone on these grounds. You see, because you have a history of the debating internet personalities who probably similar to yourself, lack experience and sophistication. And so now you're about to get exposed. I right, so this is a continuation of insults. For all the criticisms I have of Nick Fuentes and the guys on Fresh and Fit, I would say that they have developed a fairly consistent worldview that is easily accessible to the common person. And because they're so great at playing mental gymnastics, they have come up with ways to make their positions defensible and somewhat persuasive. And considering Destiny has taken the risk to debate people of that ilk, right? People who are super persuasive, super charismatic, and whose message resonates with a large audience, I wouldn't necessarily say he's handpicked the weakest opposition. But again, I'm not super familiar with Destiny's content, so I don't know. I said, yo, before we go in, let's take a little bit of background on who the guy is. And we saw in your own bio, you're making excuses for why you didn't complete a basic degree, a very easy degree at a third tier university. Wow. I'm very curious as to what this guy's background is and why he is weaponizing education to invalidate, delegitimize, and dismiss whatever points destiny is going to bring up in this debate because that's essentially what he's doing by sharing that information. As someone who has attended, graduated from, and taught at some of the world's leading institutions, I can honestly say that I'm disgusted to hear someone weaponize education in such a way to castigate another individual for not attending or graduating from a top tier institution. A. These institutions are extremely difficult to get into. B, they can be extremely costly if you don't have scholarships. C, some people don't have the luxury to go to school full time because they're too busy working and dealing with real life issues that get in the way of their ability to go out and become educated. That is a privilege. Getting into and graduating from a top tier school cannot be reduced to aptitude. Yes, that plays a critical factor. However, we have to remember that institutions like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, MIT, Stanford have been socially engineered to favor people from certain demographics over others. And oftentimes, admission to these institutions is based on the cards you were dealt at an early age. Meaning if you were born in an upper middle or upper class household where your parents combined income exceeded six figures and you had access to tutors, proper nutrition, proper mental health services, summer programs that prep you for college. Parents who actually understand the value of education because they themselves are educated and have used their education to achieve social mobility. When you have those things, you have a significant advantage over everyone else. And we also have to account for geographical differences, which is to say, formal education is valued differently in various parts of the country. So in the South, for instance, sure, there are a few great schools, UT Austin, Emory, Duke, Rice, Vanderbilt. But as far as primary and secondary education are concerned, the school systems in the South are severely underfunded, which means that kids don't have the same access to a high quality education that they do say in the Northeast or in California. And all of these variables have to be taken into consideration. I myself started off at a community college and worked my way up to the Ivy Leagues. But the Ivy Leagues didn't necessarily make me smarter. They broadened my network, sure. They gave me more social connections, sure. They enabled me to interact with people who are wealthy and powerful. Sure, but attending a top university doesn't inherently make you smarter. Theoretically, it leads to more career opportunities. It leads to stronger networks. It makes it easier to access certain benefits and perks that might otherwise be restricted from you if you went to say, a small state school. But it's not a matter of intelligence. It's about how inequality is socially engineered. <laughs> what? Ring's moving slow. He's befuddled already. He's befuddled. Yeah, okay, here. So Girl, tell, tell, tell wait, just real quick, Chief. Okay, what kind of convo do you want to have here? Do you, Girl, so, the lifeline. Let's do two things. That's a great question to ask. 
you know, when you're at the start of a conversation that seems to be going in a hostile direction, what kind of conversation do you want to have? Number yeah. one, let's go through and start with a little bit of interview so we can get familiar with you. Yeah, go right. for it. Okay. We'll, we'll share a couple of questions, get familiar with you. Uh huh. And then we'll do the thing that you did on your stream. Which... Well, it sounds like you're sharing his biography for him. You know, this doesn't sound quite like an interview. It sounds like you are narrating his biography. Which is, you played my content at length, so we'll play a couple of clips of yours, and then we'll we'll discuss it and react. Okay, so there is a backstory to it. And then if you want to get into any other political items, we can do that. But you'll notice that the title of this stream is twofold. Uh, number one, it states that you're racist. And the funny thing is I almost never use this term. I think it's overused and mostly people are lying and they're using that as an excuse to explain why they personally are losers. But in your case, you expose yourself. So we'll, we'll review that piece. And then there's a, a second thing you did, which is an abuse of language. And I find it to be very disgusting and dangerous. Mm -hmm. And you use this term homophobia. Well, which hold on, man, because you've abused language a couple times. You've abused language a couple times in this conversation. And you also weaponize education which is wrong. That's classes. Most poor and working class people go to state schools to achieve mobility and better their lives. You don't shit on them because they didn't go to the top school. And this is what I try to tell my colleagues because sometimes uh, people in certain positions have blind spots. In education, I have some colleagues, some professors, some TAs who can't understand why their students aren't taking the extra initiative to get an A in a class. Why isn't my student putting in the effort to get an A, but then they come to me and ask if there's a, hey, maybe they're trying to get A's in other areas of their life. Not everybody is an A student. The same way we love to do research and we love to teach and we pour everything we have into that. Maybe you got a student who's doing an internship on the side and they're pouring everything they have into that because that is their area of focus. That is their area of interest. Maybe you have a student who is in a serious relationship for the first time and they're pouring everything they have into becoming a better boyfriend or becoming a better girlfriend. They're trying to get an A in that aspect of their life. Don't apply the same unrealistic, the same high standards that you apply for yourself. Don't apply that to others because that's unfair and you wouldn't like if they did that to you. Yeah, which actually doesn't really exist in real life. It's something that the left often does. You guys like to create words. And oh, then you see, like he's to... playing games now. He just said what well, he said. Homophobia doesn't exist in real life. It's and you use this term homophobia which actually doesn't really exist in real life. It's something that the left often does. You guys like to create words. And then you like to instrumentalize words and also pseudoscience to- No, achieve. you see, you that's all you're doing. You're just saying words, man. You're doing a word salad. Come on, man. He's playing games. He's playing word games. Keep your ends. And so we're gonna discuss this concept of homophobia. How's that sound? Uh, sounds good. I'm used to really emotional people lashing out, calling me racist, and I'm used to really emotional people being homophobic when they have nothing else to say. So yeah, ah, wherever you want to go, go, we can go. We can go wherever you want. What? What? Uh, I'm curious on the school thing. Wait. So why do you think I quit? Here's the thing. Before before I let him continue, I I do think there's something to be said about um, if you're labeled with a title enough times then um, it, it might be in your best interest to conduct self inventory and try to understand why you're being stuck with the same label over and over and over again, um, regardless of how valid or invalid you think it is. Because if enough people from different walks of life are making the same observations, then you might wanna look into that. So I don't know if destiny is racist. I haven't seen any signs of it so far, but, uh, you know, who knows? Go, we can go, we can go wherever you want. What, what, uh, I'm curious on the school thing. Wait, so why do you think I quit school? You wrote that you quit school and your website, let's, let's confirm, your website is destiny.gg, is that you? That's me. Okay. And your website, it reads, quote, I went to the University of Nebraska at Omaha. And before we carry on, we're both clear that this that's is a, a third school. tier university. This is a very low ranking no, university, No, no, right? but not, not for Nebraska. That's a good school in Nebraska. See, you got to contextualize it. It might not be the top school in the country, but University of Nebraska is a good school. And I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to understand why he keeps getting hung up on the tiers. Bro, if you're trying to make the point that you're smarter than him, 
on a particular topic, then demonstrate that throughout the debate. You don't have to go after this man's personal credentials and qualifications and lack thereof. At the end of the day, it's YouTube, it's the internet, right? Um, people are given platforms all the time who don't necessarily have the qualifications, expertise, or credentials to be taken seriously. So I would prefer that he identifies the specific disagreements he has with Destiny and attack those points one by one. It's my, it's a state school in my, yeah, state. I didn't have money to go to private school. Can we just keep it real and say that this is like Shitville University? Can we just like not lie about that or are we gonna no, pretend? Don't do well, that. no, so don't I would that. say to people that I highly recommend going to state school. You know how many poor and working class people you just dragged through the mud? Schools, if they serve the purpose that you have, I think it's really stupid. Is this an a whole bunch of well, Excuse me, sir. Let me finish. Let me let me finish my answer. I started off at a Shitville University, and I worked my way up to the Ivy Leagues. So what does that say about me? Because I'm a living testament that complicates your rigid way of thinking. I recommend people do state schools because why would I go to a university? Because we agree that it's a low-tier university. Yeah, it's a low-tier university, but I'm going for a music degree. There's no point unless I'm going to Berkeley or Juilliard. It's not going to matter as long as the studio is good. Really doesn't matter what school you go to. You understand that, like a well, music. That, that that's a good point too, because music is different. You know, music is different. If your goal is to get a PhD and become a professor, then you you want to try to get into the best program you possibly can, right? You want to shoot for the stars because at a certain point in academia, status and prestige does mean something. Um, and the brand associated with your name does open certain doors for you, as I described previously. But if you're doing music and you don't have any aspirations to teach music, then I don't see anything wrong with going to a state school or perhaps graduating from a state school and then going to a higher tier school for your graduate education, you know, for your master's. I don't see anything wrong with that. The performance degree from another state school doesn't matter. For music performance, no, actually, the only thing that matters. Really go to school. That's why, like, for example, Barack Obama went to Harvard. That helped him a great deal in pursuing the presidency. Do you so think, do you think that, do you think that, do you, th do you think that the school that you graduate from? Your pedigree. Well, I'm just well, curious. Well, you're proving his point, though, brother, because Barack Obama went to Columbia and Occidental to study political science. Then he went to Harvard to get his law degree, which he put to use as a law professor. But what Destiny is telling you is that it's different with different disciplines. With some disciplines, you ain't got to go to the top school to get a good education and end up with a decent job. Music is different than law. You know, if you want to go get your law degree, then yeah, I suggest you shoot for the stars because that's a big investment financially. So you don't want to go to a school that's ranked at the bottom. Do you think the school you graduate from with a music performance degree, do you think that's going to mean anything when you go to apply well, for? Well, don't change the subject. Just well, no, no, I'm just, I'm asking you. I'm just, I just no, want to. He's on the subject, brother. He's, you brought it up. He's on the subject. Are we, wait, exactly. are we here to have a conversation? Yeah. You're just trying to do a hit piece, dude. One second, my dear boy. Mm. I just want to see if you're living <sighs> on the planet Earth. You no, you talking to a grown ass man. Don't 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 be going around calling people boys because you know that you wouldn't like it if somebody called you a boy. So you need to apply the same degree of etiquette you would expect to receive to the person you're engaging with in conversation. Don't go around disrespecting people just because you can. Well, no, no, I, and, I, and I'm trying to have a conversation with you, but you're just you're trying to do emotional. a hit piece. I'm, I'm not emotional at all, but I'm no. not gonna sit here and let you like drag me around in the conversation no. if you don't have a real No, taste. you attacking him and he's, He's trying to get a word in edgewise to defend himself from being defamed because you keep attacking him. It could be an, it could be it could actually be entertaining and engaging too. Like we have the ability right now to have an I'm interesting just, talk. I'm, I'm, I'm super down. calm right now, dude. I don't know if you know what it sounds like when somebody's excited, but this ain't it. No, no, I don't think he's calm. I think he's frustrated, but this is a natural human response to being met with hostility and controlling behavior because this guy keeps trying to control the tone of the conversation and it is not equitable. He wants to make his points without any pushback. And once Destiny gives him pushback, he tries to cut him off. And he says that he's being emotional and that he's switching the subject. Calm down, just relax real quick. I'm just asking Don't you do that. to find out if you're on planet Earth. I'm you definitely on planet Earth, yeah, for sure. Don't do that, because when you attack someone in a conversation and proceed to tell them to calm down, that 
is a manipulation tactic. Don't do that. You asked me, you said Marquette. You uh -huh. went to, if I were you, you yeah. said Marquette. You went to University of Nebraska at yeah. Omaha. Uh -huh. Is that a low tier university? I would say it absolutely is a low tier university. That don't matter. What, the, the what does that mean? What does that have to do with anything, man? From US uh, News and World Report, it's clearly low tier. And I went there to save money or I went there because of this. But I wouldn't start giving long, verbose explanations. No, he kept giving long, verbose explanations because you kept cutting them off. And you were implying that he went to a low tier university because he's dumb. And the reason he wasn't able to graduate was because he couldn't hack it. Insecurity. And what's more, you shouldn't try to defend it because you didn't even get a degree. You dropped out. You're a college dropout. No. So just say that. No, I see. That's fucked up. This is not how you talk to people. I dropped out. I couldn't I couldn't hack it. That's that's all I'm saying. See, like you don't have to get it. That's what I was waiting for. No, don't do that cowardly shit. Say what you want to say. If you want to drum up the narrative that he's dumb and he couldn't hack it in college and that's the reason why he dropped out, then say that. But don't try to create a larger narrative about R1 schools, R3 schools, Omaha, Nebraska. Don't do that. I don't recommend attacking people. I recommend attacking their ideas. But if you're going to attack somebody, then do that. But don't try to frame it like you are trying to conduct a fair and balanced interview because that's not what you're doing. And then throw your hands up when the guest calls you out for attacking them. Being defensive. Okay, sure. So the, the actual answer is that like different universities are good for different purposes for a music performance mm -hmm. degree. As long as the studio is good, you go to the no, studio. No, that's not his point. This motherfucker is slimy. And I know I'm... I know I'm getting triggered. This motherfucker is slimy. That's not the point he was trying to make. You're reframing it and giving a more charitable explanation, but that's not the point he was trying to make. He wasn't trying to make the point that certain universities are good for certain things. He was trying to paint poor and working class people who go to public schools and sometimes they don't graduate because life happens. He was using them as a proxy to drag you through the mud. In terms of overall rankings of university, and yeah, now it's probably he's a really low ranked university. It's the UNO, it wouldn't surprise me, yeah. But well, I'm not gonna pay out the ass to go to a state school, uh, or actually go to like a private school somewhere else, yeah. But what's that your, what's your, um, longest, that was what's the your... longest possible explanation to so, simply Do you have any idea how insecure you have to be to look up the That's ranking the longest, of the school that the I went to? That's the longest possible explanation you could ever gotcha. give to someone okay. saying, can you agree that someone's All right, go for it. What's your, can we, hit me up with your next question, dude. To do a test to see if we're on planet Earth together, but you, you're defensive and you're insecure. <laughs> Gotcha. You no, see, see you projecting and just restating what this man said against you because you have no comeback. He said, finally took him five minutes to answer that. Right, I asked you a simple yes or no question and then you've got to give me a long story. Well, I'm not going to let you fair. jerk me around in the conversation, right? Like, what, what would oh, be Oh, please, please, please. No, not the sexual stuff. Come on, man. Like, it's Ooh, early. Yikes, bro. Why, why does he keep thinking sexually? And why does everything go back to... Uh, homoerotic shit with him. It sounds like he has some skeletons in his closet. I, I just, I'm highly suspicious of men who claim to be straight and yet have so much time throughout the day to talk about gay people. Because I'll tell you right now, as somebody who identifies as straight, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about gay people and what the fuck they doing. Because what the fuck they doing ain't what the fuck I'm doing. So they could keep it pushing and I'ma keep it pushing. I don't have a problem with them, they don't have a problem with me. But I'm not gonna get on camera and complain about gay people and the, the conspiracy they trying to push the gay agenda. No, that's the type of shit you do if you got skeletons in your closet and deep down you wanna suck dick. But it's socially unacceptable to say that, so you gotta project that onto everybody else. You don't like it that other people are expressive with their sexuality, that they don't hide their sexuality. You're envious, you're jealous of that. Because why do they get to be so upfront and so proud of their sexuality when I'm still in the closet? Bro, I know, I know the type of shit you are, man. And that's okay. Yo, if you gay, you gay. And if you don't want to come out of the closet, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But don't use your sexual frustration as a cudgel to attack people who have already come out and embrace their sexuality. Bro, yikes. That? Dude, you think about other dudes' dicks more than I do. Right. That's that's really weird, right. But that if that's like, if that's how you swing, Fuck. bro, that's cool. I've seen a lot of homophobic people that secretly want to yeah. suck a dick. And if that's what you're after. I hear you. Man, if po if cool. possible, if we could try to avoid using that word. Okay. As long as you stop making the sexual... You was talking about guys taking it up the rear end a few minutes ago. What you mean? Stop saying that word. Fucking weirdo. What? That struck a nerve, didn't it? Because you know what you want. But you know because there are people like you 
in the world, you can't come out as who you truly are. But sexual jokes, I'm cool for it too, all right? You really did, and you're the first person to say anything that was homoerotic, but, but that's fine. That's fine. If, that, if that eroticized you, my dude, that says way more that's about you than about me, but enough. keep going. Anyways, okay. on, your, good. I see on your bio, your yeah. on your bio on your website, it uh -huh. reads, I went to the University of Nebraska at Omaha and majored in music performance, but eventually dropped out due to conflict with work at the time. I feel like that's one of those things where I'm like, bro, like, First off, if you didn't get a degree, there's no need to even list that. No, I've cross-registered for courses at prestigious universities that I include on my resume as supplementary education. So just because you don't graduate from an institution doesn't mean you can't still speak to what you learned at that institution or the courses that you completed. He's saying like, I went to the mall, walked in the Gucci store, and left. It's like you no. didn't buy anything while you were there. That doesn't need to be a part of the narrative. It, it's no. almost like irrelevant. Do you think I, I didn't take any classes while I was at? Wait, wait. do you think I didn't take? And the fact that he used a Gucci store in the mall as a reference just goes to show where his head is at. Which is to say, he seems like someone who obsesses over power, status, and prestige. And if that's the kind of life you want to live, that's fine. But I could tell you're an empty soul based on how you're interacting with this man. What's that? Do you think I didn't take any classes while I was there? You don't go on LinkedIn and list a school with an incomplete degree. I'm not, yes, on, that's not a, wait, wait, hold I've on, I'm sorry. It. Is my website Number LinkedIn? One. Number one. Wait, no, no, I'm just a question, just a question. Is my, is my website LinkedIn? The reason is my website LinkedIn? Is my website LinkedIn? Can you answer a single question I'm gonna ask you? People do it all the time. Or do you really just do bullshit on every guest you bring on so you can like look good? I know you're hungry for my clout, so I know you want me to stay here, okay? So let me ask no, you, I'm just asking you a question. Destiny. Is my website LinkedIn? Destiny. That's a Whether super easy yes or no question. Or is my website LinkedIn? Is my website is my website LinkedIn? I just want to establish who you really are before we get going. Let, let's establish who you really are. See, and if this was a good faith conversation, he would have just answered the question and been like, no, your website isn't LinkedIn, but my point still stands. And then he would have repeated his point and moved on. But the fact that he's not willing to give an inch in this conversation just goes to show that this is not a productive one. Have to hide from, like, for example, let's look at it on the other side. Well, no, 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 no. How about, me, how about, how about this? 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 You said to me, Marquette, did yeah. you go to Berkeley and get a degree? I would say, sir, I did that in three years. This guy fits a fucking stereotype. This is why people make negative assumptions about you when you graduate from a top school because of motherfuckers like this who graduate from a very prestigious school and use that as cannon fodder to throw it in people's faces who didn't graduate from those schools. Nah, you can't do that with me, motherfucker. By definition, if I wanted to play the same game with you, I would outclass you. But I'm not playing that same game because you could be just as smart as me, you could be even smarter. But our level of education, our alma mater, will not determine that. Hell, not even a debate will determine that. So why do you keep using it to put this man down? Did you go to Johns Hopkins University and take a master's degree while working full time? I say, yes, that's correct. So it's like the same thing. I wouldn't have like a long story. I just say, yes, that's correct or no, that's incorrect. So the question is why Okay, bro, you should have just said that. You just want to say where you graduated from. I'm glad you got that out. Are you happy now? Or verifying yours, like you're getting all defensive. Okay. Is my website LinkedIn? Why are you getting so defensive? I'm not defensive. You're asking it. Because you keep attacking his credentials. And when he tries to take the conversation in a different direction, you complain that he's switching the subject. But when he tries to answer your question, you complain that he's getting defensive. So which is it? You yeah. asked me, you're There's reading right my you biography. My website, you're reading you're my website. Everyone knows the answer Listen, to. Chief, if so you go to, listen, if you go to my Wikipedia page, if you go to my Wikipedia page, it says UNO on it. Ask them why they include it. I don't know. Some people We're like to know what you, what you did. So, yeah. with the red hair what I did was people track. ask me, what is my education? What is my educational background? I did some college and I wrote where I went to college. I didn't say I have a degree. Did you try to complete your degree because of work or because you're screw up i mean i probably could have tried harder to do both i guess you guess so i'm asking you straight like was it work you just or answered you your question well i don't think it was possible to finish that degree in four or five years while working overnight and providing for myself i don't think it was possible for me to do it okay so your story i just want to make sure i understand mm -hmm. so your narrative is that 
you as a, a young white kid enrolled, did you have any kids or like, do you have any children you're providing uh, for? I have one, but not at the time, no. I said at that time, are you paying attention, my dear boy? I said, why the fuck are you talking to him like that? What the fuck, dude? This is the first reaction where I'm like, I'm at a loss for words. What the fuck am I watching? Um, Dog, this is super cringe. If you want me to stay, I just need you to turn the cringe down like at least like five points. You're Did you have any so aggressive? I didn't have any. No, you don't. Don't you don't have to use the word cringe to substitute disrespectful because you want to make yourself sound cooler. Destiny, if I were to give him any advice, I would say it's okay to be frustrated. I guess I can see why Destiny is shrouding his frustration in the language of, um, you know, this is cringe. He's not, it's not cringe. He's being disrespectful and you're frustrated and that's okay because what he's doing right now is wrong. It's fucked up. He's blaming you for something that was outside of your control. You told him that you needed to work and that's why you couldn't finish school. And that's that's a reason many people give for not completing their education because not everybody has a privilege to go to school because we live in a society where people are struggling to make ends meet. So I'm just trying to establish who you are, right? Well, you're so not. You're I, trying to railroad a narrative of me to like no, 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 you know, no. Poison the well in front of your audience. Like, uh -huh. I'm not. You're a, fucking no, no, asshole. No, we're gonna get into. It. We're just establishing who you are because okay. the internet is filled with charlatans. You're uh -huh. one of them. I am. Yeah. And yeah, you're you doing the fucking projection thing again, bro. You're the fucking charlatan. Absolutely one of them. And I want it to be clear. And that's what we're agreeing on. Okay. The fact. There's a reason it. why I've been here for 12 years and you're going to be gone in two. But OK, Mr. Charlatan Exposer, go ahead. Tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So your story is that you didn't have any kids. Mm -hmm. You were a young white kid in university and you couldn't complete university because you, but were you don't know where he came from. I don't know where he came from either, but you don't know where he came from. I've lived in project tenements located in the city and I've lived in trailer parks in rural Appalachia. The fact that he's a white kid doesn't necessarily mean that he had the resources that would allow him to go to school. That's, That's your story? It. That's my story. Good job. Nice. You can read. I guess you learned that at Johns Hopkins, huh? Getting that master's degree. Got you. Got you. I see. So I just want to, okay, so now we have that. Mm -hmm. you, you went to university and basically dropped out and you have this long story about, oh, it was, I had to have a job. It's not really a long story. It's like one sentence long. Maybe that's long for you. I don't know. Maybe you're not a great reader, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you need to go for the PhD instead, but yeah, it's perhaps. not that long. It perhaps. seemed like you read it pretty quickly. And then in terms, you know, I'm just going through your website real quick because I want to have that's some background. Good. Cool. You can go through my Wikipedia as well. I have one of those, you know, if that's, oh, that makes you so more impressed, you know. No, I looked no, for yours and I couldn't find one, so, you know, but. You I can see that you're very proud of internet. I can see that you're very proud of internet cloud. We're going to clarify uh -huh. all of that. Well, I'm not just proud of internet cloud. I mean, I have a big bank account too. I mean, what, what do you want to compare? I mean, Ooh. we can do whatever you can want. You, we can compare bank accounts. Uh -huh. You see, you haven't done your research clearly. You see, you're one of those goofballs that you think the internet is everything. I'll give you a, a quick mm -hmm. example real quick of how I look at you. Gotcha. This is how Go I look it. at you. Okay. So I, I have a, a buddy of mine, is Michael Bloomberg, right? I have more YouTube <laughs> I'm sure you do, man. Right? Yeah, they're besties. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they I just got on the phone are. with my friend Soros, and he told me all about you, so don't worry. I know what's up here, okay? Hold on one second. Hold on one second. So I have more YouTube subscribers than Michael Bloomberg, right? Mm -hmm. But Michael Bloomberg is way more important than me in real life. Mm -hmm. And in real life, that's the real measure. Yeah, but Michael Bloomberg's not begging for my clout on his like failed YouTube channel. So I think that's the difference between you and Bloomberg there. But go ahead. Hold on one second, my dear. Also, Michael Bloomberg also has a Wikipedia article. So technically, I've got more in common with him than you do. But you know. Why are you so angry? I'm not angry at all, dude. Why do you think I'm angry? Do you think if you just keep saying you're angry, you think you can impact? Here's the thing about people like you is the dishonesty <laughs> that yeah, gets tell me. I'm so dishonest. You That's why my whole life story is on my website, my dude. Hold on one second. Tell Hold me, how, second. Tell me how dishonest I am. I got all the seconds in the world, my dude. You take all the time to go through my clip. He's having fun with it. My clip on your channel, I've never heard of you. Bruv, I still haven't heard of you. I still have no idea who the f*** you are. The only reason I've played anything of your channel is because a woman messaged me, I had a conversation with her, and then I watched her on your show. You brought me into the situation. I didn't bring you into the situation, so don't lie about that. Now, now the floor is yours to respond directly to you claiming I'm using you for clout when you brought me onto your stream twice by a video and that length the second time. Feel free to respond to that. Gotcha. So I still don't know who you are. By the time this conversation is over, I'm not going to know who you are because you are nobody. The only reason why your oh, clip was on right. my stream is because a lovely young lady came and talked to me about some racial related issues. And then somebody pointed out that she was also on your show. So I watched that show for her appearance on there. I don't know who you are. I know who she is. And I watched a couple segments from that.
And that's the extent to how I'm familiar with your content. Did you actually address the question? I see you're having trouble focusing. So the thing that you said was, I actually wrote them down because I know people like you have trouble focusing. Why do so you he, say he keeps talking to him like a child, bro? You don't talk to people like that. Not even if you disagree with them. Not even if you don't fucking like them. You don't talk to people like that unless they start off with that energy. And this guy, Destiny, did not start off with that energy. You brought my clip and then I watched the live stream at length and I didn't bring you into the situation. I responded to all three of those points directly by saying that the only clips that I watched had the lady on my stream that was on your show. And that's the only reason I watched those clips. Is there some part of that that you didn't understand? So the point was this. I'll help you out. The point was this. I, I don't need any yeah. help. I just need you, you to not say, like, actually like stop, verbalize stop. your thoughts. Yeah, you, go for you it. Just, you completed your response. Okay. The point was this, that you made an accusation that I was pursuing you for clout. When the opposite is true, you brought me onto your stream two times, and the second time you played my clip at length, which is to say when you bring up me in conversation, then you've now engaged uh, interaction. So you're being dishonest to suggest that for some reason I came out of nowhere to try to utilize you for clout. Because truth be told, I clearly don't respect you and there's no reason to respect you. We're going to go through all of the Then why are you talking to him? Okay, so the first time I watched it was because my friend was on your stream. The second time was because oh, you were making friend? a response. Oh, well, excuse me, sir. Can I finish my response? The second mm -hmm. time was because you were watching me, so I decided to watch and respond. And the third thing is, is that when you are so ass mad that you gotta go live with a title like Expose Destiny, the racist gamer and the live homophobia, it's pretty clear that you're clout sharking. But I enjoy it, so here we are. Why would I be chasing clout? Tell me more about that one. Uh, you're looking for those YouTube subs. YouTube subs? Mm -hmm. how, how does that make me money? How does it make you money? I don't know. Everybody, it's not usually about the money. Usually people want influence. And more subs is more viewers is more influence. There's a reason uh, why you're probably not happy with the 10K viewers per video you get. It's my guess. Uh, I see, I see, I see. So right now you're making a lot of assumptions and they happen to all be wrong and have no foundation and evidence. You're, you're guessing. So you're not looking for subs. You're not looking for views. You're not looking to expand your reach at all. Then what's the point of having this conversation and airing it in front of a live audience? Wouldn't you rather reach out to him through DMs and have a phone call to express some of your concerns? His reasoning just doesn't align with the incentives. In your personal life, you, my understanding is that you got married and then you got divorced and you had a child with the first woman see now he's talking about his family life and shit okay i'll give it a few more minutes y'all I'll, I'll give it a few more minutes but I, I i can't sit through this forever you got divorced from and then you got with another woman like would you break that all because i don't want to know this information i want to know about what the what the disagreement is what's the disagreement what disagreements do you have with him and how are you going to defend them? No, I don't really think I need to break down my personal life. I don't know how it's relevant to this conversation. I'm good on that. I'll tell you why it is relevant. Okay, I'll tell, tell you why me. It is Go ahead. Relevant. Is there an Be audience for this fucking guy? Who the fuck is his audience? When you're talking about, well, number one, when you're out in front as a leader, you should have merit and you should have traits that are admirable. That's number one. Listen, nobody is perfect, bro. J. Edgar Hoover went out of his way to expose Martin Luther King for being unfaithful to his wife. Martin Luther King is who we look to as the gold standard for morality and civil rights. Not even he was perfect, bro. I'm not perfect. Nobody is perfect. And if we knew more about you, if your profile was a little larger and people cared enough to look into your background, they will probably know that you're not perfect either. So don't try to play this moral purity game when it's obvious that you contort and distort your morals to come off as the bearer of truth truth and wisdom. Now, in your case, you're an individual who's divorced. You're an individual who has a child that's being raised essentially not by you. And this is why we should give out civil unions uh, to more people, especially those who have alternatives. Okay, so he's doing exactly what I said before. He's using his personal beliefs as a cudgel to drive home anti-LGBT sentiment that deprives people of their rights to get married. That's why he said, I believe we should give people like you civil unions because civil unions are below marriage. And to religious fundamentalists like this, to homophobic people like this, he sees marriage as being something that is only between a man and a woman. So he's stuck in ancient Jerusalem. You are in a situation where you've had a series of very unfortunate relationships. And this is important to know. I don't want to hear this. 
I don't want to hear this. I'm going to jump ahead. And it's not because I'm a fan of Destiny. I don't know him from a can of paint, but I don't like the personal shit because I'm not here for that. Okay, so I'm just curious. Are you ever going to answer a question that I ask or is it always the games with you? What is your question? So my question was, is do you have to be a perfect person to be critical of other people? I just stated and I'll, I'll repeat it and then I'll re-answer it again. So I'll answer it three times total. You said, do you have to be a per... Oh, uh-oh. Did he laugh? Did his connection just die? Oh, fuck. This is going to be like an Alex Stein tier conversation with this dude. I was hoping he would at least be able to do like a back and forth, but it's just like the, he's like a younger version of Jesse Lee Peterson, except he probably doesn't have like a stroke or two in his medical history to justify how absolutely brain dead he is <laughs> or incapable of engaging. Oh, how disappointing. But I guess there's a reason why, right? There's like a prerequisite like threshold for IQ that you can have in order to even be engaged in these communities right like typically at like 105 most of them are going to bleed out by the time they're 22 like there's no way that you stay in like a mind rock community this long although this guy's story is exceptional because if you watch the past videos at one point in his life he was like a pretty smart dude that's like the thing that blows my mind the most that when you when you watch where he comes from because i was expecting to dig into this who's back when he's like a total fucking moron but he's not he's actually like pretty smart like he was i but that's the thing i know plenty of smart people who have fucked up ethics so we got to get over the cult of smartness over giving people credit for being smart because an asshole is an asshole is an asshole just because you smart doesn't mean you a good person watched him talk to other people where he seemed smart he was in business seemed smart i don't know if it's like a grift that he does on um i don't know if it's a grift that he does on um on his show just to like earn money from like random suckers on youtube or what but i hope that at least his audience can recognize that like if somebody wants to have a talk with me you can go on my youtube channel like i'll engage back and forth with anybody and it's not going to be like a uh, it's not going to be like a 15 minute conversation or like well didn't you go to school and drop out well didn't you get divorced blah 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 like, oh shit. oh hey Sorry, you're back man. what's up brother how you doing <laughs> We, we certainly are not brothers. Yeah, well, now you had asked me a question before we- Yeah, I was just curious. Do you think you need to be perfect to criticize other people? Well, firstly, I don't think criticizing other people, I think you're probably more rightly thinking individuals. In the case of your racism, you were criticizing a people, and we'll get to that later. But to be critical of individuals, I think that's really useless. But to be critical of people's ideas- That's and useless, but you keep criticizing him and attacking him. Life ways. I think it's certainly appropriate that you be someone who is an example. And this is why we don't like to see hypocrisy in religious leaders, because we expect them at some level to, to. But your hypocrisy has been put on display multiple times during this conversation. So the cognitive dissonance that I'm witnessing right now is absolutely baffling. The fact that you cannot step outside of yourself to understand the way you are being perceived to people like me who came in here not knowing much about destiny besides the fact that i think he's bright and not knowing anything about you but that lack of self-awareness usually leads people like this off a cliff because there are certain adjustments that they cannot make why because it would require them to break down certain parts of their ego and that is something he is not capable of a straight path so the answer is that you are not ever going to be perfect, but uh -huh. you should be a better example. And in your case, having an ex-wife being a divorcee, uh, having a child that you're not raising in your home with that biological mother uh -huh. and being in an open relationship, I think it's an abomination, not to mention your sexual practice. Okay, so can you give me an example of one piece of advice I've given that you think is inappropriate for me to speak on? Just one piece so of advice. I'm glad he didn't, I'm, I'm glad he didn't def I'm glad he didn't defend his personal life choices because none of what that man mentioned is inherently wrong. And I don't know what Destiny's relationship is like with his son. I don't care to know. Now, if I found out he was a deadbeat dad, then, you know, we got some issues. But if it's a situation where he's paying child support and he goes to visit the son and his son visits him, then that's different but i don't know and that's none of my business in the open relationship shit in the divorce shit yo it happens bro i, pre hmm. I appreciate your question um real quick i'm gonna uh read this one by uh jabrazi and, and all the folks your fans included feel free to send in any questions because I, I do want them to be able to ask us questions and engage well, they can always super chat it to me they don't have to ship you money but i'm glad that you're um, really excited to go to uh, <laughs> Breezy, he writes I got way more views than Destiny, and I can tell. You don't need to be a stand-up guy to get viewers, clear. But play to the popular narrative or make content that confirms people's biases. Oh, indeed. I feel and, like and that's one of the reasons why my subscriber count isn't as high as this cop. Let me take a step back. Okay. 
Funny thing about you is like you're irrelevant in the real world and for some reason being a video game player uh, and having internet clout makes you think that you're cool. And the, the even more curious thing about you that I, I really find entertaining and quite petty uh, is that... You're, you're not going to answer my question? Me, He's actually not going to answer my question. He just skipped it completely. You looking at me and seeing that you're inferior, you, you go to the one thing that you think All you right, have. I'm gonna, I'll ask internet. it again, I guess. So, I think he was Googling directed by Debreezy when that super chat was read. So yeah. on that one account, Debreezy has two Who is this woman's voice? I, I'd be curious to know what their relationship is like. The one that he has to this woman. I don't know if it's a sister, an aunt, a girlfriend, a mother. Five million subscribers. And he has other YouTube accounts as well. Right. Um, I did want to play... Okay, just so you know, I'm going to ask you the same question again, like when you're done. I'm not going to engage with anything until you actually answer my question. Well, we're, we're here interviewing you at the beginning. You said, what would you like to do? And I said, we're going to start with an interview with you. Okay, wait. So then let me understand. I'll just ask and that. So am I, am I not allowed to ask any question or respond? Just tell me and I can leave already, now. You're already being dishonest because you already asked me a question and I answered it three times. Okay, so then can I ask... So then when you're so making assertions about my character, can I ask you a question? Relax one second. It's well, no, no, I'm not, no, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be your dog, my dude. Right. You're you're having trouble in the hot seat right now. You're trying your best to change the narrative, and you're also okay. lying. Well, I hope that your fans can see that you are unwilling or unable to engage with a single question that I ask. And I guess the strategy is just the false bravado of an insecure little man that just screams at an opponent and tries to character assassinate until they, I guess, no, what, get them to leave the interview. One thing about you that was a lie. We're talking. Do you think that do you think the character assassination is only a lie? Is that the truth? Do you think that's true right there? Why does the truth bother you? I never why said the truth bothered me. Really are bothered. I never said the truth bothered me at all. Well, then why are you so amped up? If someone was asking me, Mark Platt. My only question to you was: Is there a is there a is there a singular piece of advice that I've given that my life experience precludes me from speaking on? I just want to know. I'm just curious. Why, why are you so bothered for people to know what you're about? How can you say that I'm bothered for people to know what I'm about when you're reading this information off of my website that I chose to put on there? You say your world is kind of falling you're apart. You're if you want to know anything about me, it's on my Wikipedia, it's on my website, it's on my YouTube videos, my dude. The only reason you know anything about me is because I've chosen to put it out there. So I'll repeat again for the sixth time. I don't know how many times you got to do it for the Johns Hopkins kid, but why yeah. is it? What what is a piece of advice that I've given that you think I can't give because of my life experience? Can you tell how me this one? Yeah, okay, here here go I got an answer. Okay, oh cool, you thank you. It only took six a, times. Okay, go for it. Here we go. Here we go. You said what's a piece of advice that you shouldn't be giving, right? Yeah. Based on your experience, and experience is like kind of like what you. I'm do, gonna right? speed this uh -huh. up a little bit, so guys. Here, here's one. I mean, I want to make sure. Oh, you're just gonna play YouTube clip. Damn, you really can't engage at all. No, oh, it's shit. for you. It, it's it's a view. So it's a view. So oh, so just check this out. Man. I'm disappointed. Yeah. And this one points out a couple interesting things. I just like to use primary sources here. Mm -hmm. His values, consistency of values, has outright been caught out as a hypocrite by himself. himself. He, he just did it on his own, own. all because, because of, of NFTs. NFTs. Now, now this was, was what we wanted. Wait, so so this is some advice you're about to give right now. Every single person on the internet, every single person on the internet, okay, that is pushing NFTs is just trying to make a sucker. That's it. That's all it is. Every one of them. He's not lying. Basically, NFTs are a fucking scam, and I'll take that one to the grave. NFTs, crypto, all that shit. If you ain't get in it in 2019, then don't get in it now. And that is financial advice. I know a lot of these motherfuckers will say, this is not financial advice. This is not fine. That is financial advice. Keep your money. Invest your money in smart places, not in a fucking scam coin, because money is valuable. You need that to do things in life. You need to create a solid financial future for yourself, and you don't do it by gambling on NFTs and crypto. If you want to invest in stocks, if you want to invest in ETFs, you want to invest in real estate, that's one thing. But the whole NFT shit, stay away from that. And if you don't want to stay away from that, lose your money. Because we all grow up making fun of certain people. And then we all grow up we do that behavior. Okay, so now let me finish this point off. Uh -huh. So number one, you were just on camera stating that people should not get NFTs because it's a big scam. So Destiny just said NFTs are a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a pyramid scheme. We're trying to find a bigger sucker. It's a scam. NFTs are a scam. So that's what he said. Now look at the same guy, Destiny. Here we go. Let's hear what he says now when he can make a buck off of it. I think the idea behind this is you can basically buy and sell, or you can buy and sell like Twitch clips, and you get an NFT that you can NFT, autograph okay. by the streamer who the clip is of. Oh my god, did you know that? And 10% of revenue. 
streamer. Okay. 10% of the revenue goes to the streamer. They were having oh, no. a So he got caught promoting NFTs after he admitted NFTs were a scam. That's not good. That's not a good look. And he's smart enough to rationalize and justify his way out of that because he's a great orator. But he definitely caught destiny in a in a contradiction. And I'm curious to hear how he defends himself. And, and he just self self proclaimed that he has legendary Twitch clips. So now let me summarize my answer to your question. Go for your it. question was based on your experience. What should you not be able to give advice about based on your experience? We just observed you state out of your mouth that NFTs are a scam. Then we looked at a separate video clip where you realized that you could make money off of NFTs. So what did you do? You started scamming. Mm -hmm. And who just start scamming? Your own fan base. So clip one, you're Whoa. saying NFTs are a scam. Clip two, you're selling NFTs. I understand what, what he's saying. And that does not look good. With that being said, you're scamming people with your message. You're scamming people with conspiracy theories and you're scamming people with half truths. So if he's a scammer, you're a scammer too. And y'all both are scammers. And I don't like this shit, y'all. This is why I don't, I, I do my reaction videos, but if y'all tell me to have a collaboration with this person, that person, I don't co-sign any of this behavior. This is not good behavior, how these people behave. Based on your experience, being a person who says don't do it, but then you do it because you can make money, you're someone who has no integrity. Hence, you should not be a leader and not be giving advice because you're clearly a money hungry scammer. Is that an answer to your question? Uh, no, it really doesn't have anything to do with my life experience, but so let's talk about uh, NFTs. Uh, That's how I know he's an evil motherfucker because he was able to frame a coherent argument against Destiny for the inherent contradiction between on one hand, Destiny saying that NFTs are a scam full stop. And then on the other hand, selling NFTs to his audience. Why didn't you start doing that at, at the beginning of the debate? Why didn't you start with that? Instead of going after his family, going after his relationship, going after his education, going after his sexuality, why didn't you do that at the beginning? So you can engage in intellectually honest conversations, but you just chose not to. This ain't making you look any better, dog. <laughs> well, it doesn't. You said you were gonna. You said you were gonna use my life experience. Excuse me. I believe I'm allowed to answer. You said you were gonna use my life experience to invalidate uh, advice that I was giving. That's not a life experience thing, but that's fine. Let's tangle with this. Let's deal with this. So let me ask you a question. Do you know what an NFT is? No, 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 no. Hold on. You just wanted a whole spiel. You're not gonna. You're not gonna engage. He's not. He's actually not gonna critically engage at all. He's just gonna play. He's just gonna play a chimp clip. And then no, he's going to say that, that's, you say a scam yeah, so my, well, for, in order to have a conversation with you. I you don't have to know what an NFT is in order to know that it's a fucking scam because the rug pulls are happening left and right. I need to make sure that you're intellectually equipped for it. So Stop. the first question Just is, no, no, I need to know, do you know what an NFT is? Self. Do you know what an NFT is? You peddling NFTs. Okay, so what's, well, the, difference between, what's, the, what's, the, what's yeah, the difference yeah. between you encouraging your fans to mm -hmm. send you money through the purchase of NFTs versus just how everybody else goes about mm -hmm. NFTs? Well, you're doing the ethical NFT. If you want to sell an NFT to somebody and you advertise right. it as such, this is an NFT. If you want, in my case, it was a clippable stream moment with some varying levels of rarity, then you have the right to do that. Go for it. But if you're trying to sell somebody an NFT and say, like, bro, buy this yeah. NFT in like two months, you're going to get rich, okay? I'm selling this now for 10K. You can so sell it's it. Just the it's just a lack of prosperity gospel. He's playing semantics here. He's saying, I just told my audience about the nft i didn't tell them to go buy it i see his argument i don't think it's a very strong because if you're making money off of the message you're delivering to your audience about a product then that constitutes as promotion as far as i'm concerned you understand this is, so i'll go back to the beanie baby example do you think there's a difference between selling somebody a beanie baby saying hey here you go and he's one. such a good debater that he starts using examples to um you know strengthen his point and stuff like that just because you are a great debater uh, doesn't necessarily mean you're always right you could be a great debater but be wrong about a lot of things. Likewise, you can be someone who's not great at debating and you could have a lot of really good points that are valid, right? And I think um, one lesson that, I, that I've taken away from reacting to Destiny's content and how he frames his argument is the importance of learning how to communicate and truly understanding like the intricacies and nuances that underlie human communication and language in the meaning that we ascribe to words. Um, I think these are things that people just need to get better at because the worst thing in the world is to know that you have great points 
that are valid and that are true to your experience and to the observations that you're making about the world, but not knowing how to articulate them in a way that is persuasive. Um, because when you don't know how to articulate them, uh, you know, somebody else comes along and shuts you down. The collector whatever, versus selling somebody a Beanie Baby and saying, hey, keep this, in like five years it'll be worth three X of value. Princess Diana Beanie Baby dude's gonna blow up. In fact, I think it did, but like- I'm gonna ask you the same question when you finish rambling, so go ahead. I just think it's, I just think it's interesting. I don't know, man. You're gonna repeat the same question, so think about it. I know you're rambling right out of things, so go for it. And now because he talks really fast and because his thoughts are structured and they follow a logical pattern, uh, now this guy is in the hot seat and he's fumbling over his words and taking more time to, you know, get him out, which makes him look bad and makes him look like he's stalling and that he doesn't really have a strong argument for why Destiny is guilty of doing the same thing he said he was against. You know, I've had a lot of debates um, and I've been on debate panels, but there are certainly levels to it. And uh, Destiny seems like a high level debater. That doesn't mean he's right about everything. Thing. Um, but it just means that he is great at articulating his points. And I think many of his points are valid. If we take away his rhetorical gifts, I'd venture to say that I agree with him on a multitude of subjects just based on the reactions I did to his debate with Nick Fuentes and his back and forth on Fresh and Fit. But yeah, these are just like thoughts that are running through my head. You said before that it was a big scam and you were just looking for suckers to buy NFTs. Like you think that now you're justified in doing that because you're not telling them that they can make money off of it. First of all, I'm not directly selling them the NFTs. Secondly, I'm not flipping it onto them. a third party that you're sponsored by? It's not like I hold the NFTs and I'm trying to unload it onto a bigger sucker. I'm pretty right. sure they're the you first know, party you, origination you, is the real site. The question is, did you get paid to convey the message about the NFTs? Was it a sponsored product? That's what the question is. Problem is you don't even really think you know what NFTs are. Right. So I'm gonna ask you the question again. What is the difference between an NFT and a Beanie Baby? Or do you think there's a difference between selling somebody Beanie Baby and saying, hey, here you go, collect it, maybe sell the future, versus selling somebody Beanie Babies? Uh, the difference is that Beanie Babies don't depreciate in value over time. NFTs do. It's like, hey, in like five years, this will be three X its value. Do you think there's a difference between that? Well, I think one is a, well, when you tell someone that there's an ability for them to invest in something and then they do or do not make money on it, that could be a bad thing. True, sure. I agree. One million percent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think and that a lot of people that sell yeah. NFTs do exactly that. They say, bro, so buy this shit is gonna win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just because you didn't say buy this shit doesn't mean that you weren't selling them. I think we're just having a semantic uh argument here. Okay, but so do you find the sale of NFTs at all ethical? Yeah, sure. An NFT is a thing. You can buy and sell if you want. Wow. Well, why do you think? Why do you think buying or selling an NFT? Moment, Wait, hold on. I, need, I, need, I need to hear you. I need to explain this to me. Why do you think buying or selling an NFT is unethical? I told you guys. If anybody tried to bring this up, then nobody even knows what the fuck NFT is. This is why this is not the slam dunk. You're talking about <laughs> all of you, okay? All of you dipshits on my fuck Reddit, okay? I know you're watching, and you was like, Destiny, people are gonna bring up the NFT thing in the future, and it's gonna be the easiest dunk. No, it's not. You fucking morons. Nobody knows what the NFT is. You really think somebody's gonna be able to dunk on me on some shit where they don't even know what the fuck it is? Like, it's that is like the easiest. You you don't have to know what an NFT is in order to know that it depreciates in value that it is highly speculative and that the nft market is super volatile in a way that benefits a very small group of people who invest early on so it is highly problematic right it's not a safe investment at all it's not a long-term investment and if y'all disagree then i'd be curious to know how much money you've made off of nfts in the comments and if you haven't invested in nfts i'm curious to know why so this is a staunch disagreement I have with destiny and mine like pitfalls in the entire world You're gonna try arguing about a technology. You don't even know what it is. Are you serious? You're gonna try to quote mine me and you don't have any understanding of any of the topics It's like that's like the easiest debate in the world. Like holy f Let me answer that. You asked me a question. Yeah, I'm gonna answer it. Okay, that. let me hear it. First off You clearly have no sense of my background. I could tell when you started mentioning bank account number one. Yep. Then number two What's my background? He's not answering. I Did you hear an answer to that? Did anybody say anything? One. No, don't, don't talk. I'm talking right now. You asked me a question. Okay, I, I you did the ramble thing before you get the answer. Okay, go for it. Now, okay. I also hosted a conference. During my conferences, I teach people about entrepreneurship. Ooh, big mistake, but okay. Yeah. How to grow 100,000 sub YouTube channels? Hold on a second. Yeah. Or Hold how to start failed startups like Fletch. Mad. How did that go? Why yeah. You keep interrupting. He's mad. I'm not mad. You asked me a question, but you interrupt me. You're so okay. angry. Calm down. It's all right, man. I'm sorry. Calm down. Just let me answer the question. You don't got to get angry. You see people like you try to cut me off so the truth doesn't get out. You just asked me, do I know about NFTs? Now close your lips so I can answer your question. Because okay, you feel stupid right now because you didn't realize you're talking to a technologist. Okay, then let's see if you can answer the question. I'm excited, go ahead. Be silent so I can answer your question. Okay. And when it's your turn to talk, I will be silent out of respect. Go for it. Now, you clearly had no background. I'm helping you out with an answer. 
you ask, do I know what NFTs are? Not only do I know what NFTs are. He's playing the piano. Music right now? Okay. I'm just waiting for you. I, I was waiting for you to answer. You gonna, you gonna say the answer? He's matching crazy with crazy, man. You acting crazy right now, and he's acting crazy. He's, he's truly triggered. Okay, no, that's cool. I'll, I'll chill. I'll chill. Wait, go ahead. You are? He can't even have a proper conversation. He's basically like storming off. This is what happens on Mori when they say, you're not the father, and the chick just storm off. Wow. He's mad angry. He asked me a question. I didn't want to hear the answer. This we're going to talk, talk about NFTs? This guy's angry. Now, listen. Go ahead. I had a conference here. Oh, he's And I, during the conference, we showed people exactly how to create NFTs from scratch. So I had my buddy. You don't have to be disrespectful just because you're angry about the fact. No, that don't do that. You've been disrespecting him the entire time. No, no. You got to have it consistent the whole way around. If it's going to be a respectful conversation, then it's going to be respectful. If it's going to be disrespectful, it's going to be disrespectful. Don't apply a different set of standards to yourself than you do somebody else. That you were busted in a lie. Would you mind stop playing music? Were you going to tell me what an FTS? Would you stop playing music and just listen to the answer? Because right now you're angry and now you're trying to distract. This is very petty. Oh, he's mad. <laughs> he's mad. Do any of, does any of his uh, followers want to get on and tell me how this is the rational debate? Do, do you have somebody Googling the answer? Is that what you're waiting for? So this is, this is okay. so for the, for the people that don't know, right now what's happening is a stall tactic. He probably has a friend who's trying to Google he's what is an enemy. This is very entertaining, but it's not exactly the most uh constructive conversation so i think i'll end it here um yeah this shit is toxic but the piano move was genius and <laughs> um yeah i'm entertained i'm entertained y'all tell me what you think about this reaction tell me what you think about this conversation and tell me what you want me to check out in the future okay if you enjoyed this video please comment like and subscribe i'll see y'all next time peace